we're going to look at how to create a lunar mosaic using photo editing software. We'll be using Photoshop to create a small mosaic of the Copernicus region, but the methods we'll show you can be used on any size of lunar mosaic and in other photo editing programs. But why would you make a mosaic? Well, simply it allows you to produce high magnification pictures of large areas of the moon. There is of course software available for constructing mosaics automatically, such as Microsoft ICE, but there are several benefits to doing it by hand. First, it gives you precise control over where each image in the mosaic is positioned. Secondly, you can choose the best process features from individual images and erase any overlapping features that you feel aren't up to scratch. You'll also feel a great deal of satisfaction knowing that you created the finished image by hand from the very first capture through to your final finished file. Creating a successful mosaic, of course, starts at the capture stage. Here, you should try and make sure that every capture you take with your webcam overlaps the last one slightly. So while you're recording one capture, choose a prominent feature on the edge of the image frame and include those on your next capture. To put the mosaic together, you first select the images you're going to use in it. These images are known as panes, and they're the final pictures you get after processing your webcam captures with Registax. We selected eight frames that will enable us to create a final picture with Copernicus at its center. Now each frame will have a small white border around it. These borders are a byproduct of the processing in Registax and they need to be removed by cropping them very slightly on each frame using the crop tool in Photoshop. To do this, open each pane image in Photoshop, then double click on the layer to unlock it. Then select the crop tool and holding down the left mouse button, draw a rectangle around your image just inside of the white border of your pane. Click the tick button in the top bar and the white border will disappear. Next, you want to create a new workspace that will be large enough to accommodate your final mosaic. Do this by going to File, New, and typing in the dimensions you want to create. We'll create one that's 20 centimeters square with a resolution of 300 dpi. Now choose one of the images to be a starting pane that you can build your mosaic around. We'll choose our best process image of the Copernicus crater itself, which we just prepared. Drag this image into the middle of your new workspace. Next, choose a second pane, which includes a feature that also appears on your starting pane. Unlock this one and also drag it into your workspace. Bring the second pane's transparency down by about 20% by clicking on the opacity slider at the top of the layers palette. Roughly line up the overlapping lunar feature on the second pane with the same feature on the starting pane. Then bring the second pane's transparency back up to 100%. Repeat this process with all of your other panes until they're all roughly aligned. Next we need to fine tune our pane alignment. So you begin by turning off all of the layers except the one containing the starting pane. Do this by clicking on the eye icon at the edge of each layer. Turn the second layer which contains your second pane back on again and reduce its transparency again by about 20%. Using the magnifying glass tool, zoom in very closely on your chosen overlapping feature and nudge the pane into place using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Turn the layer off and on repeatedly using the eye icon and continue nudging it until you're happy that it's as closely aligned as possible. And then just bring its transparency back up again to 100%. Now, due to small atmospheric fluctuations at the filming state, you may notice that some of your overlapping lunar features are very, very slightly distorted from pane to pane and they don't all look identical. Nothing to worry about, it's quite common and the effects, they won't be large enough to spoil your final image at all. So you repeat this process for all of your other panes until you have a very accurate alignment. At this point, the mosaic is coming together nicely. Now what you can do is you can choose the lunar features in it that you judge to be sharper and clearer and you can remove any overlapping features that are not as good. Now in our mosaic, the starting pane had a far better version of the Copernicus crater than the other panes that are now lying on the layers above it and are obscuring it. So, using the eraser tool, rub out the feature on any overlapping frames until you're left with a well-processed panes version of that feature. When you're erasing, be careful not to rub out any parts other than the particular feature. 
so make sure you choose a fairly smaller razor by adjusting the slider in the top bar. Also at this stage, if you need to, adjust the brightness levels of any panes that look too dark. Repeat this process with each pane until you're happy that you have the best process features from any overlapping panes. Now your mosaic is almost done, but there are a few final tweaks left to do. The first thing you need to do is merge all your panes together by holding down the shift key and clicking on each layer. Then, via the top menu, go to Layer, Merge Layers, and merge all your panes into one layer. This will leave you with another layer sitting beneath them. Turn this layer black by selecting the paint bucket tool, ensuring that the foreground color icon shown here is black, and then clicking on the workspace itself. Adjust the mosaic's brightness level to your taste using the shadow highlight tool, which can be found via the top menu by going to Image, Adjustments, and Shadow Highlight. Adjust these sliders individually until you're happy with your final image, then click OK. You can also, if you like, use the Levels histogram at this stage to adjust your contrast. Next, you can sharpen your final image by using the Unsharp Mask feature in Photoshop. Via the top menu, click on Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. Now you can adjust these sliders to your taste, but be careful not to overdo this because you don't want your carefully prepared photo to end up looking like a computer graphic. At this point, you can check for any missing pieces of your mosaic as well. If there's small areas, you can use the cloning tool to fill them in. This is only really advisable if the area is free of any prominent or recognizable lunar features. So select the cloning tool and holding down the Alt key, Click on an area nearby that you think looks a bit like the missing texture. Move to the missing portion of your mosaic and paint into the area with the cloning tool to add the texture of the area you just clicked on where there was nothing before. Finally, save your image as a JPEG or a TIFF file and you're done. You've finished your Lunar Mosaic.